right, guys, thanks for coming to check out a new video of another auto sports engineering fabrication specific based product. Now, what you have here is gonna be our DIY intake manifold kits. Uh, they're pretty much geared for anyone that's capable of welding or wants to do something unique with a lot of the, the custom engine builds that they're trying to do. Uh, all of our intake manifold flanges configured are for dual injectors per port. So basically all of these, for example, the Hondas will come with eight injectors. Now you're gonna say, well, why do you, why do you need eight injectors? Well, to be honest with you, if you see the power that these guys are throwing down on the street, much less the track nowadays, you can see why they need all the additional fuel for E85, M1, you know, whatever type of, you know, highly base alcohol type fuels that seems to demand a lot more uh, per combustion cycle. Now, these kits are called DIY or do it yourself for a specific reason. Now, when you're on the site, you might look and you'll see some of the pictures where they're stacked up together and guys wanna ask me the same question. Does it come welded? Well, if you look at the item's description, it's in all caps with asterisks at the beginning and the end tripled where it says item must be welded together. So please stop asking me if it comes welded together. Otherwise it would not be a DIY kit. Now, what makes it DIY is basically I have set it up for a plenum base. And what's unique about this plenum base is it actually configured with the shape and bolt pattern to match the skunk ultra race manifolds, not the street manifolds, the race, the big boys. So the spacing is offered in two different configurations for the Hondas. I have an 81 millimeter bolt bore spacing. That's gonna work with all of the Honda B series, such as the B16, B18, the standard 1.8. Uh, now I also offer your larger spacing of 86 millimeters, which will work with all of the other larger displacement Honda motors, such as the H series, the H22, which I do offer a flange for, the S2000, which is also 86 millimeter, and of course the Honda K series, which is really popular right behind the B series. Now, those, like I said, it's gonna be 86 millimeters spacing. Now, when you look at both of these, you might think that they are the same, but what you'll notice, you can probably check it out, is, the port spacing is noticeably different. That's why we sell two different ones because obviously your bore spacing and your cylinder size is different between those particular motors between, like I said, the H, the K, and the F series found in the S2000 versus the standard 81 millimeter B16, B18. Now, if you notice on the backside, these things are recessed. I've set it up where it's a little bit easier for you guys to construct where these runners are actually port shaped and designed to drop in. It actually will make the whole welding process and construction and fitment easier. Now, what I wanna tell you guys though, is even though you see some of these carry the recesses and stuff, stuff like that, on the flanges, they aren't going to allow these to drop in. For instance, on the K series, the runners you'll receive are gonna be very, very close to the port shape. That's how I kind of designed them. So you pretty much line them up after you drop these on here. What I usually tell guys is just put it through a couple tacks, hold the runners in place, flip it upside down, tack it to here. This port shape is going to match this port shape identical. But you'll say, okay, well, it doesn't drop in. Well, the reason it doesn't is because there's a little bit of compromise between all the flanges and the designs. And the reason for that is a lot of guys might wanna use this on NA platforms or do their own custom runners. Uh, for NA platforms, a lot of guys might actually buy the RMR or the Ross Machine Racing uh, billet extrusion. And those recesses in here are designed to match those. So we kinda set it up where you can go either or and what's gonna happen is you'll just need to do a little bit of, you know, post-fab blending, which we kind of designed this with that in mind. You know, we left a little bit more material on the plenum bases, on the faux stacks, so that the guys that wanna get really aggressive with their port shaping and create a really deep bowl, you got material there after you fit it all together. Now, overall length on these things, including the height of the flanges, the flanges will come in 
at about 1.47 inches tall. Once you combine all of this, you'll have an overall runner length of about 5.9 to 6 inches, depending on which configuration you're running, which is going to be some guys will ask, well, can we make a longer runner? Realistically, what you guys might not think about is as far as the manufacturing process goes, a runner of this depth is a pretty long runner and gets kind of difficult to machine. These aren't cast. These aren't formed. These aren't stamped. These are full billet. I cut these from a solid block of aluminum. And what happens is the longer to stick out of the tool is the harder and more difficult machining becomes. So machining two inches down deep, even with a half inch cutter, that's pretty far, much less trying to drop it all the way through for four inches. So it's a compromise to get you guys something that's affordable, that'll suit the job. It's not going to fit ideally everyone's you know, power goals or if they've done the math trying to figure out their overall runner length, but it's gonna get you something that's gonna make a ton of power. I mean, we've been ha selling these things for close to five years and we've seen guys that are matching the pre-made manifolds that are out there without the compromises that those guys had to do. Now, what I mean by compromises, I'm not saying they cheaped out or anything, they just went a different route. And part of the reason for the popularity on these kits is definitely because when it comes to setting up your injectors, all the guys love the fact that their injectors are side by side. Moving the injectors from being on the bottom side of a runner, as we see some guys do, or stacking them behind each other, it's a lot simpler for setting up your fuel system one you're gonna it's gonna cost you less less fit-ins less lines and you'll you're actually gonna get more repeatable control flow you know you can stage your injectors for the big power guys if you wanted to stack them back but for the guys that are on the street you can actually realistically split your output on your injector so that they're always driven at the same time and what i mean by that is you won't have to worry about one injector only being used at really high power levels and having a tendency to want to lock up from these uh, caustic fuels that are being used or when you let your car sit for a short period of time or even you know you might drive your car every day but you're never hitting the higher boost levels where your second set of injectors are coming on when you do it this way you can actually make all of your injectors run but at a much lower duty cycle so that they're always in constant use and you know how it is you park your car you come back something dies on it something doesn't want to power up it's just the nature of it is it's murphy's law that's the only way to really truly describe it so that's one of the main things that guys love is the fact that their injectors are now side by side i mean it makes a huge difference as far as the ease of maintenance when you got to pull these things apart in between passes if you're at the track or if you're in your garage and you want to pull the thing down for the weekend just to clean your injectors to make sure that you know your maintenance is done uh, now the next thing we're going to go over is options now what you'll notice the b series actually carries a variant bolt pattern. And what that allows you to do is actually set up the, uh, set it up on both a GSR or a B16. So a B18C or a B18C5, C1, on top of your standard B16. So one flange will cover all of the Honda B series. Boom, easy. Now next, we also have a K series variant. This is K20. I don't make anything specific to the K24 because the K20 seems to be the most popular, to be honest with you. Uh, I also have the F series, which is going to work on the Honda S2000s. And you will notice I do have the offset port for the guys that, uh, for running the water neck. And for the redheaded stepchild of Honda, guess what, man? We didn't forget about you. I still offer a H series. This is only H22. So, H22 VTEC. I don't offer anything for a H23 non VTEC, so don't even bother to ask me. I don't offer anything currently for a single cam D series, so please don't ask me. Uh, I, you asking me is not going to make me want to do it because I have tons of product that I'm in the middle of developing. If I decide to go that route, eventually it will come to market. And that's only, I pay a lot of attention to see what's going on in the market, and I kind of make products where there's a high demand some of these other options you might say oh man i'd love to have one well unfortunately 
from just my market research, if I don't think that it's a product that will sell regularly, it's not going to come to market. It's really gonna take away time from other products that I already have lined up. Now, you'll look at the kit, you'll notice that the rail has no fit-ins on it. That's part of the whole DIY aspect. Now, these are the accessories that are supplied with the kit. You're gonna have a pair of mounting tabs, billet, CNC machine, and you have two dash 10 fit-ins. They ship with dash 10s primarily because that's the most popular size. The center bore of these, it's gonna be well capable of supplying a ton of fuel, man. This is, if I remember correctly, I believe it was gonna be about 0.8, so, which is a pretty big bore. Uh, so this is a large bore, which is popular for dash 10s or dash 12s. You can actually get dash 12 fit-ins to drop in and weld on the end. Uh, we don't machine these rails to go directly on here as far as spacing and stack height. Reason being is we want to keep it, keep the cost down and it is a DIY. So as far as setting up your fit-ins and your tabs, whoever is already going to be designated to weld in this together, that's a step that they are well capable of doing. So obviously you can get injectors that are going to be about 60 millimeters or I've seen 43 and 48 as far as height. And then you also have a couple other variants. That's why we don't send spacers. Spacers you will pretty much cut and set up based on your injector's length. I don't know what brand injectors you're using and I really don't have the time to try to accommodate all of the different brands that are out there. Not to mention some guys have uh, seated spacers on the base of the injectors. Some guys have different hats on the top. It's way too many variants for me to try and manage. So I give you the basics that you need so that you or whoever is fabricating welding this all together can get that taken care of for you. Now, the next thing you're going to notice is beyond what you have here, the kit is designed to be welded together. Just like I said earlier, now, once we get all of this stuff lined up, it's pretty straightforward as far as welding. You'll have a, essentially eight welds for this and two for your tabs and two for your fit-ins. That's it, you're ready to go from there. Now, as far as the rail, guys will say, well, what size injectors? Not sizes in flow, but sizes in diameter for the O-rings. Every one of these flanges are set up to accept 14 millimeter injectors. Well, you might say, well, my my injectors are 11 millimeter. Well, they're more than likely nine times out of 10, only 11 millimeter if they're aftermarket injectors because someone installed a hat to actually neck down the base from 14 down to 11. So if you actually remove the hat, you will expose the original diameter, which is gonna be 14 millimeters because every modern aftermarket injector and even OEM injectors for probably the last 10 years has been 14 millimeters, you know, only old style injectors, which I don't see anybody really using for an application like this are still 11 millimeters. So like I said, it's 14 millimeters if you are using, for instance, a Honda B-Series set of injectors, you will more than likely have a set of hats installed on your injectors that necked it back down to 11 millimeters. So when it comes time to set up the rail, all you have to do is pull your hats off and it's bound to be a 14 millimeter underneath the hat. And that's what the rail and the flanges are gonna be machined for. Now, since we're already discussing injectors, injector sizes, there's one last detail that I wanna go over. Guys will ask, well, do you make these where I can only run four injectors or do you make a four injector version of the intake kits? No, I do not because the primary demand are for the guys that need multiple injectors. Now, what I do offer instead are a set of optional plugs. So any of the guys, if you've looked on the site, you'll notice that the four injector version actually costs slightly more. The reason being is that you'll be sent a set of uh, one of these plugs where you can plug up the unused uh, injector port between the rail and the manifold. Now, the reason I went for this is that it does allow you to upgrade later because I've had guys where they're running just four injectors and then later on they need the additional fuel flow based on the type of fuel that they're running. And all of a sudden they're in need of an extra set of injectors. They've had to buy an eight injector version of the flange and then cut it off and re-weld. Well, guess what? Uh, 
just from you know years of seeing what guys are ordering uh the steps they go through the upgrade process i eliminated the four injector option altogether so what you'll get are a set of these dummy injectors that are double o-ringed ready to go so you can plug your unused injector ports and this will open it up in the future so that you can always add another set of injectors down the line now you'll notice they come in two different lengths what you're going to want to do is the shorter one are going to be roughly about 58 millimeters the longer ones are going to be 70. now how you're going to want to measure to figure out which set that you need based on the injector injectors you're currently using sorry i misspoke is take your measurements based on the top and the bottom being 14 millimeters so if your injectors you had to remove your hat you might have been at 70 millimeters with your previous hat but since your hat might have necked it down to 11 mil you had to remove that hat that would have dropped you down to where you needed the shorter unit so remember your factory injectors make sure that the top and the bottom are set up for 14 mils so remove whatever hats are preventing you from getting 14 on the top 14 on the bottom because that's the size of the rail and that's the size of the intake manifold flange itself so beyond that once you do that then you'll be able to make the proper selection on the site between these two options which are pretty much going to cover everything that's on the market uh, another side note when messing with these injectors and inserting them uh, the ids and the newer boshes which are really popular you're going to come into uh issue which is they actually place a like a, a spacer style plastic cap on the bottom of the injector and that will prevent the injector from actually popping into the, the uh, intake flange but that's removable it's just a factory top type seal it's not going to do anything it's not a dust cover obviously because the upper and lower o-rings are what seals everything up so you on those in on those injectors if you have a set and you're having difficulty getting them to get all the way down into the hole just go ahead and pop those off on the bottom of the injector and they should pop right into the intake flange and let's go back to the rest of the video so outside of that it's pretty much straightforward we have a few different variants for you as you can see but that's pretty much the overview on what this kit is and what the the main goal as far as uh what i wanted to accomplish which was like i said ease of dealing with multiple injectors stacking them side by side and also offering guys that don't have an off the shelf uh intake manifold options such as the eight series guys uh you know they didn't have one and there are very few available on the market the f series guys they have uh, a few but most of the time you can't get them so i still offer these but by far obviously when it comes to the hondas the most popular ones are going to be the k series and the b series so this video should have covered all of the questions that you might have had and feel free these are normally stocked i can get them out within a few days in most cases uh, depending on the current order load that's going on on the site. So go ahead and hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe. I got tons of other videos and check these things out, man. Grab a set.